What's up, YouTube? This is Chew Off for TV. I'd like to thank, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Rasan for the donation to the channel. Thank you, Rasan, for your donation to this channel, man. I really appreciate it, man. Thank y'all for the love and support that you have shown for me, uh, shown toward me for uh, quite a while now, man. And anybody else who want to donate to this channel, you can do so in the links provided in the description box, man, if y'all choose to. Now, in this video, man, I want to talk about LeBron James. I try to stay away from talking about him as much, man, because, you know, I just get this stupid reputation of being a LeBron James hater and shit, man. It, shit just irritates me, man. Like, you know, I don't know, man. It's just some people on here, if you say anything about LeBron James that's not, if you talk, if you do a video that's 99% positive, but you might say one thing is critical about somebody, then in their mind, it's a it's a diss video. You know, like, I, that's why I was saying, like, I did a video last week saying I, I can't really deal with rational fanboys anymore, man. But at the same time, I can't really dictate my channel toward the loud and irritating minority. I have to do my videos for the silent majority. Well, actually, you guys aren't that silent in the comment section, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so I'm going to talk about LeBron James and what concerns me about him this upcoming season. And we all know that LeBron James, for his career, has been one of the most durable players of his generation and one of the more durable players in the history of the NBA. Now, he's not the most durable. You know, I think that's overblown by the media. You know what I'm saying? They made so much of him playing all 82 games. I think it was his last year in Cleveland. I'm like, you know, I mean, you want to talk about, like, true Iron Man, you talk about Randy Smith. You talk about uh, Dolph Shades. You talk about, uh, really, I think the greatest Iron Man is Elvin Hayes. You know, I think he missed, like, nine out of a possible 1,312 games or something like that in his career. It, it was like a, a ridiculously low amount of games. Carl Malone, you know what I'm saying, only had one major injury in his career. His last year the Lakers. And um, I bring up Malone, too, because of the fact that, you know, LeBron James is entering his 17th NBA season. And I have been telling you guys for about a year or two that I thought LeBron James was getting ready to enter more or less the twilight of his career. You know, the, 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 I thought he was exiting out of his prime years and going toward the years where he, you know, would still be a productive player, but you could gradually see that he was on a decline. And people were like, oh, man, you know, it's bullshit, man. He's putting up 28 and 7 and 7 or 26, 8 and 8. Yeah, he's still putting up great numbers, but if you watch the games, you can see that he's not the same player that he was, you know, probably his first year back in Cleveland. Uh, the year that he won a championship with Cleveland, he's definitely not the same player that he was with the Miami Heat. And the biggest difference that you see on LeBron James is he, he, he doesn't put forth the effort that he did in Miami on the defensive end. You can just see clearly there's a, a decline, a serious decline on that end of the court with LeBron James. But it's not just the level of production that I think is going to decline, you know, especially on the defensive end I'm worried about. What I'm more concerned about is the fact that I wonder whether or not the injury that he suffered Last year, the groin tear or strain, whatever it was, I think it was a tear. Um, I wonder whether that was just an aberration and he'll continue to be his Iron Man self or whether that's the beginning of what you call old man injuries in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Shaq started getting that toward the end of his career. And by, what I mean by old man injuries is those injuries that occur with older players usually through non-contact ways. Just the gradual wear and tear of having played thousands 
of NBA games, well, over a thousand NBA games, and thousands and thousands and thousands upon thousands of minutes, you know, uh, in this league. Um, I don't know how many minutes LeBron James has played off the top of my head, but I would assume it's well over 45,000. And that's a lot of fucking minutes, especially for a guy who biologically is only, and I say only, 34 years old. He has a lot of mileage on those legs and on his body. And then you couple that with the fact that he is a guy who is a large player, physically, six foot eight, 200 and I don't know what his playing weight was during last season, but he obviously looked a little bigger, especially after the groin injury. I would say he was 265 to 280, maybe. Um, Pretty sure he's going to lose whatever little weight he gained during uh, the season after the injury, post-injury during the offseason. But still, he's a bigger guy. He's older. And his game isn't conducive to longevity in a lot of ways. Um, The way that he scores. You know what I'm saying? He bulls to the basket. You know, he kind of plays football out there when he's when he's playing basketball. And one thing about Carl Malone was that Carl Malone, as he got older, relied more and more on his mid range jump shot. He relied more more and more on his mid range to outside uh, jump shot to score, and uh, he would mix it up. He was still going inside, but he relied more and more and improved upon his mid-range to outside jump shooting to the point where he was probably the best, I got to think about it before I say it, but he probably was the best shooting uh, big man, uh, at least power forward in the NBA, or one of the best big shooting big, uh, big men in the NBA. LeBron James has never quite mastered uh, the two-range jump shot. He has spots where he can hit from outside, especially from three-point range. We all know that he can shoot from the corners from three and from the top of the key. He kind of has like his little sweet spots where he can shoot from three-point range. But consistently, as far as being an outside shooter, uh, he's the, he's kind of the, the gr- declined, actually, because I thought that he – had improved his outside shot when he was in Miami, but it's kind of degraded. And I saw an interesting statistic from Bruce Blitz a couple of months ago. He put up a video, and I was shocked at the fact that throughout his career, including this past season, 67% of LeBron James' points have come from inside the paint or the free throw line. So, basically... As he ages, you're going to see a guy whose scoring average probably will, unless he improves dramatically on his outside shot, this is a guy whose scoring average, as he slows down and may not be able to get to the basket as often, his scoring may decline. Uh, precipitously, especially I would say after he gets to age 36, 37. Um, I'm not even talking about like how he's going to work or mesh with Anthony Davis or any other, you know, supposed players or, you know, if Jimmy Butler comes to, I don't, I'm not even talking about it. I'm just talking about right now his health. I'm worried about it, you know, and, and one thing I will say is, I think for LeBron James, from this season coming up and beyond, less is more. Less is more. Um, And this isn't like me dissing LeBron James. I've talked about all these guys from a historical basis. You know what I'm saying? Um, We saw age affect everybody eventually. It affects every player. Kobe Bryant with the Achilles tear, you know, and, and how that affected the last few years of his career. He was a shell of himself. Michael Jordan with the Wizards was a shell of himself. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the last few years, especially the last two seasons, was an absolute shell of himself. 
was still putting up maybe 10 points and four rebounds, five rebounds. He was a shell of himself. Patrick Ewing was an absolute shell of himself when he was with the Seattle Supersonics and the Orlando Magics. Kim Olajuwon was a shadow of a shell of himself his last couple of years with Toronto Raptors. So it's not me hating on this guy. I'm, I'm just telling you from watching players, once great players, when they get to a certain point of their careers, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You know? I know a lot of you guys love this guy. I enjoy watching him play. But it's going to happen. And what I'm wondering right now, I just am speculating whether, you know, this injury situation is just a one-year thing, a blip, or whether this is going to be the beginning of a process where he becomes more fragile and more injury-prone. Um, I'm leaning toward thinking that it's going to be a gradual thing. You know, I think he's going to have little knick-knack injuries. You know, I don't know whether he's going to have a serious injury again where he misses 20 games like that. But I wouldn't be surprised if he starts having knick-knack injuries. And also, I think what you'll see, and Ticket TV talked about this too, you're going to see an emphasis on load management to prevent those types of injuries from occurring. Because he's getting so older, so much older, and, he, and he's uh, acquiring so much uh, mileage on his body. So I think there's going to be a uh, a coordinated effort by the Lakers to limit his minutes. If I were the Lakers, I, I, I you know, and I know LeBron will probably fight this because I've heard him say he's re he's ready for whatever he can do whatever. Look, I know you're a warrior. You can do whatever you you know what you want to do, but what's best for you and the organization is to not overplay you, especially during the regular season. <clears throat> in the playoffs, especially later rounds in the playoffs, that's a whole totally different conversation. If we need 40-plus minutes from you, LeBron, then that's good. But during the regular season, against the Memphis Grizzlies, we don't need you to blow out your knee playing 45 minutes when we want to keep you around 32, 33 minutes per game. You know? But that's what I think, man. You know? Uh... I think that he's going to become a little bit more, how can I say this? I think starting next year, he's still going to put up great numbers, but you're going to see a, 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 I think you're going to see a difference in his level of play, his foot speed, his first step. It's going to be noticeably slower um, than what we were accustomed to seeing. But he's still going to be a great player because great players are able to always overcome whatever physical uh, limitations they start to have to adjust to. His basketball IQ is off the charts, so he'll be able to adjust to whatever physical detriment he now has to deal with. Um, trying to think of other athletes in similar situations. Uh, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is probably the fastest as far as uh, hand speed or foot speed heavyweight we've ever seen. He was able to get away with so much because of his spectacular speed when he was younger. After his three and a half year of exile, he wasn't the same guy. He still was a very fast guy with very fast hand speed, but he wasn't as agile or quick, especially with his legs, as he was before. But he was able to still use his in-ring generalship and his his boxing acumen and boxing IQ to his advantage. He was able to still be a very successful multi-time uh, heavyweight champion. So LeBron James will be able to still be LeBron James to an extent. Um, but I think there's going to be some some games where he looks not to, not as good, you know, and that's just natural. So that's all I got to say about that, man. I think LeBron James is a great player. I think he's going to still be a very effective player for a couple of years to come. But I do think that age will start affecting him, especially after, uh, especially this season coming up. 
I think this is going to be a year where you look at LeBron and you you kind of can see with the eye test for certain for this, you know, this is going to be the first year where you look at him and it's like, okay, you can't blame injuries anymore. Um, he He's not quite the same guy. That's what I think. Still going to put up like 25, you know, 8 and 8 or something like that. But I think he's not going to be quite the same player. But tell me what you guys think.